Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to study one of the other second order effects in MOSFET, which is subthreshold conduction. We know that when the gate to source voltage, VGS, is greater than or equal to VTH, the threshold voltage, my transistor starts conducting and there is a current flow. When VGS goes below the threshold voltage, ideally my current inside the channel should be zero. However, that's not to be the case. ID is not equal to zero. There is some finite current which will flow. It's a very small current or a weak current, but that current will still flow because when VGS goes below the threshold voltage, the current doesn't go to zero, but drops exponentially as we'll see soon with the equation. This current which flows when VGS is less than VT, also called as weak inversion, is nothing but the subthreshold current and this condition is nothing but subthreshold conduction. So in simple words, what we saw here is technically we want our ID to be zero when VGS is less than VT, but then that does not happen because the current does not drop off linearly to zero, but it drops down exponentially, which we'll see through an equation shortly. And this presence of small weak finite current, which is nothing but the leakage current is nothing but subthreshold current. And the condition when this takes place is nothing but subthreshold conduction. Now let's see what will happen due to this subthreshold conduction. The presence of this current will lead to static power dissipation, which we'll see in the future clips. In simple words, if you have to understand this, then assume that you have an array of memory where there are transistors present and there are a lot of transistors present in each array. Technically, let's magnify one of the transistors from this array. Here, if VGS is less than VT, you want this transistor to be off and ideally the ID should be zero. However, because of subthreshold current, that's not to be the case and there will be some ID which will flow. This ID which flows when my circuit is non-functional or when my circuit is idle or off leads to power dissipation. It's as good as you having an electronic device and the device is still idle, but still there is power loss or power is dissipated or the battery is getting discharged. So we want to understand the effect of subthreshold current and the relation of it with the threshold voltage. So let's quickly write an equation. So the value of subthreshold current is given as IDS equal to IDS O exponential VGS minus VT. This is nothing but the threshold voltage upon eta times thermal voltage. This entire thing is into 1 minus E minus VDS upon the thermal voltage. This IDSO can also be written as some constant beta thermal voltage square into exponential 1.8. This term has been derived empirically. This is nothing but your Boltzmann KD by Q, which is nothing but 26 millivolts at room temperature. And this is a constant which currently we are not getting into. The reason why we are not getting into the integrities of this equation is because we are not technically concerned about all these terms because we are not going to design anything as of now. What we are concerned with is the effect of threshold voltage on subthreshold conduction. That is what we are keen on. This IDSO is the current at VT or threshold voltage and is dependent on process and geometry of the device. Remember this. This is all what we need to know and eta it's a non-idility factor which is greater than 1 and ideally for CMOS processes its range or its value is between 1.4 to 1.5 for CMOS processes. So now we know all the terms of this equation. VGS, threshold voltage, 26 millivolts, non-idility factor, train to source voltage. If you observe the equation closely, you would come to know that when your VDS is equal to 0, this term will turn out to be 1, 1 minus 1 would be equal to 0. That means your subthreshold current would be equal to 0. However, when your VDS increases, it will follow the pattern as mentioned in the equation. Now let's see what happens due to threshold voltage. It can be easily seen that if my threshold voltage decreases or increases, let's first see the fact that the threshold voltage is decreasing. Whenever my threshold voltage decreases, my subthreshold current will increase exponentially. So if I have to plot the graph of say log of ID versus VGS, where this is my point called as threshold voltage, 
when my VGS is less than the threshold voltage, that is the case we were talking about, when my threshold voltage decrease, my ID will be an exponential dependency and once VGS goes greater than threshold voltage, it behaves like a square law device. I will draw it, drop the D here for you. So this equation tells us that when threshold voltage decrease, my subthreshold current increases exponentially or we can say that leakage increases exponentially as threshold voltage decreases, which we have already showed on the graph here. Now we saw that in MOSFETs with device sizes being scaled and we know that there is threshold voltage also which gets reduced due to scaling. When that happens, subthreshold current becomes a very challenging parameter for the designer. Also, this effect is worsened by a phenomena called as DIBL, which is nothing but drain-induced barrier lowering, in which a positive increase on VDS reduces my threshold voltage. That means as you keep on increasing your VDS, your threshold voltage keeps on reducing. And when that happens, we know that as threshold voltage decreases, your subthreshold current will increase exponentially. When this happens, Subthreshold current leads to static power dissipation and hence this becomes one of the most challenging issues. I hope you have followed what is subthreshold conduction. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.